actionfiguresresource.com. At the time of this review, I've watched the first five episodes and have to say I'm pretty impressed with the texture of the animation, which at times has the energy of stop motion. The voiceover work is professional and lively, and I don't mind the silliness. The show has potential, and my daughter and I are keen to watch more. The packaging is a striking purple and green, which was a neat design choice, since subconsciously many people my age would think Donatello, given that colour scheme anyway. It beats the 2003 line, which was simple and yellow, with big turtle faces at the top. I do, however, confess to missing the green on brick design of the 1988 line, but that is carefully separated out for the six-inch classics by Playmates, who pay homage to their past work there. I do understand the requirement to differentiate the two. The first thing that struck me was the particularly tenacious twisties made of plastic, not wire, that manacled Leo into the packaging. He took some coaxing to fully remove, and it's possible little children might break a weapon in their enthusiasm. As soon as he was in my hands, I could feel that Playmates had used the NECA figures as a starting off point. The scale is virtually identical, it's a little bit smaller, as are most of the articulation points, and on a superficial level, the sculpt. The differences come in required revisions to make real headway in the mass market. The weapons are unpainted, like the original 1988 figures, but unlike their 2003 or NECA counterparts. If you look at early release images of the figures, this is not the case, so that corner got cut at some point. Obviously being based on the new show and drawing from every other incarnation of the Turtles except the 1984 Mirage comic, Leo's bandana is blue. I actually prefer this as the comic was never my version of them and the four brothers need their colourful identities to remain distinct. This is why I only bought the NECA Raphael, because his red bandana is the same either way. It was just happy chance that Raph is also, by and large, my favourite brother. Unlike the surfer dude turtles, but again commensurate with every other version, the knee and elbow pads are brown across the board. The 2012 line also adds foot and hand wraps, which here are nicely textured with a gauze effect tie in neatly with the ninja style, and are an addition I can accept to make this series stand out from the rest without jarring. The smell of this figure hit me suddenly and unexpectedly after opening. It's one I haven't experienced for years. Remember those cheap dressing up costumes from the early 80s with plastic sheets printed with designs of the characters you were trying to be? It smells like those, which weirdly takes me back to a time even before the turtles were big with me. A time of He-Man and Transformers. I liked it. The scale hits a nice midpoint between the Hasbro-style 3.75-inch lines, which feel too small for real detail to me, and the 6-inch Mattel lines that are perfect, but tend to make for pricier figures. With this size, a larger collection is easier to obtain, and yet they are stylized enough to maintain an individual flair. Crucially, unlike most figures in smaller scale, Leo is pretty wide, so you're getting more toy for your buck. Also, it potentially paves the way for vehicles and playsets, which would be incredibly expensive at 6-inch scale. There's a lovely weight and heft to the figure. It doesn't feel cheap or disposable, and would stand up to the punishment of play, provided the kids mind the weak points on the weapons. I remember accidentally breaking off my original Leo's forearm and then snapping one of his swords, and having to get creative with superglue, which at 9 years old positively thrilled my parents. Leo's fun and determined facial expression was one of the elements that won me over on buying him before the others. I already bought the NECA Raph, and I'm not a huge fan of his massive snarling mouth in this line, so I'll save him for last. Mikey is a rather sickly yellow-green, and although he was the first turtle I ever bought back in Woolworths 1988, I originally wanted to find Leonardo. Don also made me pause for thought as he has a really great facial sculpt, but in the end I plumped for the leader as the natural starting point. He has a ball-jointed neck which is absolutely perfect, holding his head firmly in a series of dramatic positions. His arms and shoulders are another story, and maybe the weakest aspect of the figure. The upper arms are an odd shape that made me wonder if I had a defective figure, and they were either on upside down or the wrong side of his body. They're not, by the way. Because of his chunky elbow pads, the elbow joints themselves only bend a little. His wrists do swivel as well, which makes up for some of the sword swinging posability, but his right shoulder joint is so loose on this one figure that he can only hold his arm up in certain positions. The overall effect is more than adequate for a figure this size, but I would hope for some revision of this in future Leos. The legs hold their many positions, which is a relief because it's disastrous to have a figure that can't even stand. His feet are wide and heavy, giving him a sturdy base, 
but I had some difficulty getting him to stand in certain seemingly normal poses. Again, it doesn't wreck the figure, and in the addition of a display stand would fix this. He has the peg holes in both feet for just such an occasion. The addition of a flexible rubber chest plate also allows for a decent movement in the legs. He has three toes, which is a first since the brothers traditionally had three fingers and two toes per extremity, mimicking ninja hand and footwear. This doesn't affect the figure as it was a design choice for the new show, presumably either to make them seem more human or to help the animators along in a 3D space. The eyes are a point of contention. The original comic, first line of figures, 2003 animated series and toys and these new 2012 figures all lack pupils, making the characters look more mean and determined. It sacrifices a little humanity for comic superhero cool. However, the original TV series, Archie comics, all the movies, live action show, and notably the 2012 show, all have turtles with pupils present. It's almost an even split across the board. The interesting thing about this new Nickelodeon show is that when the turtles go into ninja mode and hide in the shadows, those pupils disappear, which makes for a nice balance and a subtle tone shift I didn't immediately notice. So this is Leo, ready for action. It's almost certain that there'll be figures in future lines with big, expressive eyes to balance this out. The textures are extremely impressive on a figure this size. Leo's skin has its own miniature detailing all over, making him seem more like a live creature captured in stasis than a toy. The leather on his pads and belt and even his chest plate is nicked and cut, worn and weathered in a manner that you rarely see in something offered to children. Notably, Raph also has a chip of shell missing from his chest to match the show, which is a great touch. There's a teenage awkwardness about his stance, and like his brothers, his hands and feet are slightly too big, which makes Leo and his brothers both more lovable and awkward. As for accessories, Playmates went back to the collection of lethal ninja weapons rendered in a sprue that they had to be carefully removed from. This is a great touch, and their inclusion is nearly enough of a nostalgia boost to make up for the lack of paint on the weapons. Leo holds his swords firmly. Wobbly weapon grip can suck all the fun out of a figure and they slot, with some careful work, into his over-the-shoulder scabbards. There's a third sword in his accessories, and all three are different sizes, despite all being katanas. This is reassuring, considering my previous encounters with broken weapons, although the third one is too big to slide into either of the scabbards. There's also a pair of shuriken of the throwing star variety, and three throwing knives. Finally, there's what looks like a shiv that Leo fashioned while in prison, which is disturbing. I picked this up in Toys R Us for £9.99, and they can be had for around $8.99 in the USA. That's a price point that gives me great incentive to seek out his three brothers, Splinter, Shredder, and a bunch of others at retail. And I'm going to take two points off for those loose shoulders, awkward arm joints, and lack of paint detail on the weapons. As it stands, this is Playmates rendering the Turtles at their absolute best, deftly balancing mass-marketing kid appeal with high-quality sculpt and articulation for collectors. This is a similar scenario to the re-released Thundercats lines. Unlike my predilection for the earlier look there, the larger-scale classic turtle figures Playmates released alongside the Nickelodeon line remind me of the goofy turtles of my past, whom, as it turns out, I'd rather leave there, fondly. This revision, marrying so many fine elements of the franchise's heritage, makes me want to move forward and see the turtles of my daughter's generation develop. In other words, this is going to be a line I stick with. Action. Figures. Resource. Actionfigureresource.com